All right. Uh, last week, for those of you who were here, you know that the uh, message last week is being continued, and the name of it is Hunkering Down in Warfare. Hunkering Down in Warfare, and today we are uh, coming back with the uh, addition, um, the uh, admonition of uh, preparing, being prepared for the worst. Yes, sir. Being prepared for the worst. Uh, there are worse things to come. And those of you who know your word, who know the Bible, the Bible speaks of these times. But that's the name of this sermon, Hunkering Down in Warfare, Preparing for the Worst. So let's jump right in, because as I've said many times before, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. We all know that the clock is a, a, a clock is mentioned in reference to time. We mention time. When we mention a clock, we know that we're talking about time. And so we're talking about the time is running out. A clock tells us that <clears throat> something is almost done or something is coming to an end. That's what it means uh, when we mention preparing for the time or preparing for the worst. We're talking about uh, time. We're, uh, and I see that Zoom is being set up again. Uh, praise God for that. Welcome everyone on Zoom. And so we're talking about time. You haven't missed much. I said we're going to jump right in because the clock is ticking. So when we talk about time, we know that there is an urgency now, Pastor Annalisa right here, not only does she take care of all the media, but she's a great cook, all right? My wife is a great cook, and sometimes she uses a, 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 a tool or an instrument. I didn't cook today, though. You didn't cook today? Okay, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to talk all the good <laughs> things that I was going to talk about. No, she's a, she's a great cook, but, but, but one of the things she does is she uses this... Uh, thing called a crock pot. You ladies and men probably know what a crock pot is. She'll do that to prepare a certain dish. And now um, that crock pot has a timer on it and you can set that timer and forget it. I didn't know that. She knew it. But you can set that timer and forget it. And you know what? That thing will quietly cook that meal. Whatever is in that pot will be cooking and sometimes She'll make this delicious stew or soup, and it'll be cooking in that crock pot with the meat just marinating in it and everything, You're getting all soft and, and where you can chew it real nice, and you won't even know it, okay? Uh, see, it, it doesn't heat up the house like a regular oven does, and that's what I like about the, the crock pot, because it'll cook and so most times, I don't even notice that anything is cooking until it's done. Well, and this is, where, this is where I'm going with that. You need to know that in this world, something's cooking. Something is always cooking. And guess what? Most times it's us. Yes. I hate to take you out of that from a meal to catastrophe, but sometimes... We're the ones that cooking, that's cooking. You see, mankind is, uh, you could say, we've been placed in a spiritual crock pot. Huh? And the timer, the timer has been turned on. You could say that we're in the soup. All right? We're in the soup and the timer is on full tilt. That's how we have to see ourselves now. And I'm sure uh, uh, some of you, maybe most of you, have heard the analogy about a frog. If you, if you place a, a frog in a, in a pot of boiling water, what will he do? He'll jump right out. He'll jump right out of that boiling water, okay? But if you were to put a frog in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in that same pot, but have it tepid or, or lukewarm, that frog will... He'll just swim merrily around and, and you turn up the heat and let that water start to boil. And that frog will continue not noticing that he's in hot water. And he'll continue swimming around until he's boiled alive. 
Now, to me, that's, that's not a good analogy. That's a terrible analogy, and I've heard that story, and I always cringe when I hear it. But it's pretty accurate when it comes to the plight of mankind up to now in our current existence. You see, we as human beings have been cavorting around, merrily living life our way, not knowing that we're in hot water. Hmm. There's a lot of people out there that don't know they're in hot water. They don't know that the clock is ticking, all right? And that's what we need to think about. The, the, you can be in a situation and not even know that your situation is now reaching the boiling point. All right? That's what we need to think about. Uh, even with what we're seeing right now in society, it's being flashed all over the news, all in social media, all across the land, people complaining across the world, and guess what? People are still behaving as they normally do for the most part, okay? And that's because as we've learned in 1 John 5, 19, what is it? The whole world lies under the sway of who? The devil. The devil, the wicked one, the evil one, whatever you want to call him, Beelzebub, Lucifer, whatever name you want to place on him. But we're under that sway. That means that we as a people are existing subject to the power of the devil, as I mentioned in Bible study on Wednesday night. We become slaves to whatever controls us. That's what the Word tells us in 2 Peter. 219. That scripture tells us that we've become captive by corruption. That's it. That's the truth. So we're so used to our own worldly behaviors and fleshly desires. And now we've been behaving that way for so long that we don't even rightly notice when the water is turned up a little bit higher, when the temperature is rising. We don't really know that things are heating up in this crock pot of sin that we've been placed in, okay? We don't realize that Satan is preparing us like a meal. Satan is preparing us. He's salivating because he wants to devour us. You say, wow, I didn't get all that. Well, that's what the Bible tells us, okay? The, the devil has many people marinating. That's how you have to look at it. Marinating like meat, waiting to be chewed up by the devil. That's what we have to think about. Let's go to the scripture. And uh, uh, since we're speaking about it, I'm going to ask Pastor Aunt Lisa, if you would please, to take us to 1 Peter 5, uh, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. You all know this one, but let's read it together anyway. 1 Peter chapter 5, mm -hmm. verses 8 and 9 tells us, be sober, mm -hmm. be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Resist him steadfast in the faith, mm -hmm. knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Did you get that? He says that. That's exactly what's going on. We've got to be sober and vigilant. And obviously, this scripture verse is clearly telling us the importance of being what? Being on the lookout mm -hmm. for the devil. We've got to be on the lookout for the devil. It says that we are to be sober, and that means clear-headed. That means that we have to be rational. We have to be rational in our thought processes. We have to be rational in our... Um, in our doings, we have to be looking, okay? Amen. We have to be serious when it comes to being on the lookout for the devil. It's just like crossing the street. You wouldn't just jump out in traffic, would you? You look to your left. You look to your right. You cautiously take a step. And that's what I'm describing. That's what this word is describing, uh, uh, what is encompassed uh, in this, in this uh, scripture is that we have to be sober and vigilant. We don't have time to have our minds uh, um, affected and pulled away from the Word of God when it comes to being under attack by this enemy. See, we're in warfare. Amen. Even if I don't care about myself, I'm responsible for my family. 
Even if I wake up on a bad day, I'm responsible for this congregation. I'm responsible for my children. I'm responsible for my grandchildren. I, there is a, a burden put on me. I've got to be sober and vigilant and, and, and I have to be aware of the ploys of the devil. And that's what this is talking about because we're talking about spiritual warfare. So what we have to do is what? Hunker down in warfare. We've got to lock on to the Lord. Amen. And what the world needs to do is come to the realization that the devil is real. He's real. Mm -hmm. He's real and he's working to destroy mankind. The devil is no joke. I know people believe that to a certain degree because in society, everybody talks about the devil. Everybody talks about the devil. Everybody says they believe in the devil. In Hollywood, they produce movies about the devil, don't they? Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of demonic movies. They've got, do you remember that old, I, I go way back, see, I don't get to watch movies now. I used to watch movies, a lot of movies, when I was uh, unsaved. But now I don't go to the movies too much. And then when I do, I look for a nice uh, Christian movie that won't grieve my spirit, or worse yet, Annalisa's spirit. But back in the day, I watched a movie called The Omen. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. I watched that one. That was a bad one. But then they came along with one worse called The Exorcist. You remember that? That was about the devil in possession. Then there's another movie called The Fallen. Anybody ever seen that one? Old movies that starred Denzel Washington. Uh, uh, and, and, and nobody won in that movie, no human being. But what I'm trying to say is that so people believe in the devil. Hollywood makes movies about the devil. People dress their babies up as little devils on Halloween. huh? Even some of us so-called Christians, when we have our fall festival, whatever that means, we uh, sometimes you see in churches little babies coming in Dressed up like a little devil. So I know, <laughs> I know people believe in the devil, okay? But let's tell the truth, church. Uh, 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 that, that, we'll leave that topic for another day. What I'm trying to say is that we believe in the devil, yet our actions day to day, year to year, century to century, people seem almost oblivious. To the fact that the devil is real because if we believe in him so much why don't we take precautions against this devil you see what i mean and this is for humans the world over the devil is out to get you the devil is out to get us he'll ruin your marriage he'll break up your home he'll leave you jobless and on drugs or on alcohol if you're not aware of it and even if you are aware of him, you have to do something about it. He's a very aggressive enemy, all right? Therefore, many people must not, uh, uh, I don't know, I want to say most people must not know or believe that the devil is real, like I said, because if we did, we would take the appropriate measures to defend against this demonic activity that he puts on us. And we're seeing it worldwide today. But let's go to our Bibles and let's see what it says about the devil being real. There may be some of you out here who really don't believe that the devil is real. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've had experiences where you, of a spiritual kind. But let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And let's go to chapter 12, verses 9 to 12. I'm going to ask Pastor Alisa to read that. I'm trying to find something brief because we can't go through the whole thing. But let's go there. All right. And see what it's saying. Revelation, Revelation chapter, chapter 9 to 12. 12, verse, verse 9. 9 starting with verse 9, it says, mm -hmm. So the great dragon was cast out. Mm -hmm. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. 
Verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. All right. Thank you, Pastor. All right. It says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Okay. Now, it's saying that, that the devil has been cast down and he's come down in great wrath. All right, because he knows that he has a short time. Mm -hmm. And if you read this chapter, if you've seen this chapter before, and you've read it about the woman, the, the dragon, the child, and uh, the the analogies that are going on here, and you know that there was war in heaven, that that uh, John got this vision, and of course we know that Satan was um, kicked out. All right. So those who study God's word and know uh, uh, this this word know that the devil is real. The devil exists on the earth and he lives to cause destruction Inhabit. and death to the inhabitants of the earth. Now, this text of scripture is but one bit of evidence uh, uh, illustrating the role that the devil plays in the world today and in the lives of our people. But if you look in John, in the book of John, Jesus himself says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that the thief comes to what? Kill, steal, Kill, and, steal destroy. and destroy. He's talking about who? The devil. the devil again, okay? We know that, of course, we have much more information and evidence, evidence which warn us, it warns us of the existence of Satan. You've got to know, okay? Uh, that that he is real and also his demonic forces they're real as well all right so this should serve to prepare us to take the necessary steps to defend against attacks that's what we need to know that he's always on the attack but we see we as people we seem to not want to hear it you know who wants to hear about somebody out to get you all the time mm -hmm. You know, we want some good news, you know, so even if you had to lie to me, you know, just lie to me sometime. That's almost the stance that we take. Uh, some people don't want to hear this stuff. My, my family uh, back in Illinois, basically, they don't want to hear about no devil. They want to go and have their parties and they want to go and do their thing and they want to watch their game shows and they don't want to have to study to show themselves approved. But see, people don't understand that the clock is ticking. Amen. This is warfare. And we need to know these things. See, that devil, he's doing a real good job. He's doing a pretty good job, at least on the surface, because he knows that people can get real comfortable in their lifestyles. We can become real comfortable in our sin. I was comfortable in my sin. Mm -hmm. Before I knew Jesus, before 2004, before I had been in a church and I was 49 and I was comfortable in my sin. Mm -hmm. I was okay about lying. I was okay. I took care of my family. I did my job. I had a good job and I Praise did God. my thing. But I'll tell you what, I was comfortable in my sin until Jesus pulled my coattail and woke me up, literally woke me up and told me who he was and told me that I had to repent my sin That's what he said. and showed us heaven and showed us hell. And that turned my whole life around. Okay, and it turned me around. Now I stand in a pulpit uh, preaching the word when I never, ever would have uh, asked for this job or imagined it or even suggested that anybody take a job like that but when you know the Lord and you know what's at stake you'll do whatever he tells you to do to get Amen. yourself right Amen. and that's what I'm trying to tell people now okay uh, Jesus uh, wants us to wake up he's saying wake up 
grab my hand and you don't have to stay in that crock pot of sin. I will pull you out before the water gets any hotter. Amen. That's what he's saying. You don't have to wait till you're boiled alive. Amen. Okay. But Jesus is saying, I'll pull you out if you let me. Yes. But Satan wants to keep us just like that frog. Yes. He wants to keep us wandering around, walking around, uh, uh, doing the things that we want to do. You see, the Lord's plan is still in effect. It's in effect right now. He wants not one of us to perish. Thank not you, one. Thank he you, stands Lord. to cleanse us of our sin and put us in right standing and on the road to righteousness. Thank you, Look Lord. what it says here. Pastor, read what it says in 1 John 1, 9, please. 1 John 1, 9. Mm -hmm. 1 John 1, 9 tells us, If we confess our sins, mm -hmm. he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. This tells us that we can be cleansed and put on the road to righteousness. You can be cleansed of your sin. You can be cleansed of your addiction. You can be cleansed of your anger. Yes. You can be cleansed of adultery. You can be cleansed of fornication. Thank you, Lord. You can Thank be you, cleansed Lord. of thievery. Thank you, Lord. You can be cleansed of deceit. Hallelujah. And God will take you and put you on the right road if you repent. If we repent. But that takes having a made-up mind to follow Christ Jesus Listen. and focusing on his word. Yes. Focusing on that word from the heart and not just on the surface. Because a lot of people say they love the Lord. A lot of people say, I love God. You love God. I love God. They say that. They made a song about it. But you know what? <laughs> uh, saying and doing are two different things. Okay. Uh, but we have to realize it's, it's, it's got to be more than just surface talk. Amen. All right. Uh, because the clock is ticking. The devil is busy. He's trying to keep us distracted. He wants to keep you in the crock pot while he turns up the heat. Just look at this uh, uh, again. I hate to keep bringing this up, but it's still hot on the, on the, on the aisle right now. This uh, uh, infamous murder of Mr. George Floyd, okay? The devil is so sly because on the one hand, listen to this, on the one hand, this, this incident served to showcase racism, did it not? Okay, mm -hmm. I think we can all say that now, mm -hmm. okay? It showcased racism and the dis dis disparate treatment of blacks by basically white officers, okay? Mm -hmm. And it... It, it's, it speaks to systemic prejudice, systemic racism, which is, in fact, in this country and throughout the world. Now, this didn't just start yesterday. Mm -mm. It didn't start with George Floyd. Mm -mm. It didn't even start in this 21st century. It started centuries ago, mm -hmm. hundreds of years ago. Now, but, but, but when we look at that, on the other hand, what's to be done about it? What are we going to do about it? What is the world going to do about this racism problem? We're seeing that all kinds of people have all kinds of ideas on how they should solve the problem. All right. Protesters say we're going to protest. All right. Activists say let's get active. All right. Politicians say let's politic. All right, let's even campaign. And oh yeah, let's not forget the looters. The looters say, uh, let's loot. All right, uh, and, and let me tell you this. Some of the, before we, before we frown at the looters, some of those looters truly believe that what they're doing is not looting. Some of them truly believe that what they're doing and what they're taking really belongs to them in the first place since the wealth of this country was born out of the toil of their and the sweat and the blood of their ancestors. Hmm. Then you have the anarchists and the terrorists that say, let's terrorize. So everybody has their own idea. Everybody has their own agenda. What a mess. Who's going to straighten this out? Who can straighten it out? The only person that, that's right, Sister Liz, the only one that can straighten it out is Jesus. 
Truth. He's the only one that has the proper answer. Jesus. See, what Satan has done, now I want you to see this, what Satan has done is he put all these assorted ingredients into that pot. We're in it somewhere. You all are in it uh, somewhere. I'm in it. Annalisa's in it. We're saved, but the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The so we're all in the, the pot. Yes. You hear that? It, yes. It's a gigantic pot. Yes. It's a pot of, uh, what's the southern dish called? Jambalaya. jambalaya. It's a pot of jambalaya, mm -hmm. but really it's being stirred by a liar. So mm -hmm. I want you to know, and I say that whimsically, but it's true. It's a pot of jumbo liar, but your gumbo is jumbo when he's a liar. And so he's got us all in there yes, and he's all. stirring up the pot. Yes. That's stirring what he's up the That's pot. That's what he's doing. He's stirring it all up and none of us can avert being cooked further unless we turn to the Lord. Amen. Unless we turn to the Lord, you cannot turn avert being boiled in this pot. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Unless we turn to the Lord and enlist his aid in all of this, because you better believe it, things will get worse. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us we haven't seen the worst yet. Okay? Even as we speak, the death toll from COVID-19 is rising. It's rising with no viable vaccine, no cure in place, to our knowledge anyway. And our leaders have resigned them uh, themselves to opening up the country, as we said, opening up the country in an effort to keep the economy from total collapse. And we can understand that. Like I said, you've got business owners and, and entrepreneurs that have worked hard and they're trying their best. Okay? And Satan will take any and all of these things to stir the pot. And that's exactly what he's doing. All of this activity makes for more chaos. Did you know that? And Satan is continually doing his thing and he's still looking to devour whom he can. Yes. He doesn't change you all. He's still doing the same thing. Do that. So what do we do? Watch this. Pastor, take us to, let's go to Jeremiah. This is nothing new to you all. I'm telling you this, but this is an urgent plea. This is an urgent message, not just for you all, but it's for other people who don't know this, or maybe we forgot somewhere along the line. Let's go to Jeremiah 29. And take it down to from 11 to 14, please. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14 tells us, mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, mm -hmm. thoughts of peace and not of evil, to mm -hmm. give you a future and a hope. That's right. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, yes. and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will be found by you, says mm -hmm. the Lord. And I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I don't uh, believe I have to go through this whole text word for word. Uh, or even line by line. I think you all know this. We have studied this for so long. I've taught this for years. And if we, at least as Spirit of Truth Church, have dialogued about this, you all have given me the answers to these questions a lot of the time. But in case some may not know, I'll just sum it up by saying what this word is telling us is that Although we as humans have our own plans and may think we have the proper solution or the, uh, uh, the, 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 the right solution um, uh, to the problem, we, we identify, uh, 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 we, we sum it up our own way, in, in other words. Uh, whatever the problems are, we might think we have the answer, but that's a surface remedy. Hmm. You hear me? You're, it's a surface remedy. We can only scratch the surface because there's something deeper going on here. This is a spiritual battle. You can't just solve one thing. It's a domino effect. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and this is why only God can relieve us of the problems that besiege us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Only God can do it. 
Only God can relieve you of the problems that besiege you. We can put a band-aid on it, but we won't solve the entire problem, okay? And this is a plague. And by the way, plague is a is a very appropriate appropriate word nowadays. I'll tell you why. Because it's through this uh, coronavirus plague that millions of people are being afflicted and killed worldwide. Mm -hmm. Not just here in America, but worldwide. People are dying left and right. But as I alluded to earlier, there are several other sinister plagues at work. Hmm. Huh? We just talked about one. The plague of racism is sweeping through our country. Yes. Just like this coronavirus has mm -hmm. come through. And it's sweeping through other parts of the world. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Okay? I just heard about racism in London, England. I just heard yeah. about the same thing that's happening here in America has been happening in London, England for years. Okay? Plague is at work. That's a plague of racism. It's a plague of white privilege. Okay? White entitlement. That's a plague that's come through. Yeah. Okay? Now, uh, there are plagues of fear coming in now. Yes. People are wondering what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? That brings a plague of aggression. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then people start buying weapons and sitting on their porches and rooftops, aiming at what, at whomever is not a, a, a regular in the neighborhood. That's a plague of aggression and fear coming through. Mm. Then we have plagues of self-agendas coming through. Everybody's in it for a different reason and a different season. Oh, and some people yeah. are just taking advantage. Then we, then we have this, this plague of immoral sexual lifestyles without repentance. Okay, three, seven, huh? That's still underneath the surface of something. Homosexuality, transgenderism, transvestitism. Okay, you could say that all these things are in the pot. Hmm. Satan is stirring it up. Stirring it up. What's in it for you, my friend? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, what's in it for you? Huh? Black Lives Matter, are you black? How much black blood do you have in you? How about your grandmother? How about your great, 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 great grandmother? Oh, and it, it, when does it stop? Hmm. How do we solve it now that we know it's a problem, okay? And these are things, these are plagues. Even as I said, even the, the, the uh, 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 even one's sexual identity and, and different things like that. These are all plagues and it's all in the pot that certain is, Satan is there stirring up. But rest assured, uh, these are plagues just the same they're plagues of desire. Plagues of desire. What's in it for you? What's in it for me? And we like what we like. Yes. Okay? If I'm entitled to something, okay, not my fault. I like it. I want to keep it. Okay? If, you, if you've got a, a, a nice home, a nice car, or whatever, uh, you, 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 you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth and somebody gave you and paid for your college, are you going to just give it away? Of course not. You call it entitlement if you want to. It's yours. Hmm. Anybody can understand that on the surface. But we've got to look deeper and say, what is the problem? Yes, Who's please. been wronged and how do we make it right? Help us, Lord. These, but, yes. but then the desire is fueled, as it says in James 1.13. When desire is conceived, it produces sin. And when sin is full grown, it produces death. Oh. That's what it says. Each one of us is led away by our desires. And when that desire is conceived, stuff starts to happen. And people get wrong. And we'll let it go on and on yes, and on as long, as long as we come out on top. Yes. Speak and that's what we have to see. Speak Can't Lord. nobody change that but Jesus. How can a man change the heart of man yeah. when man didn't uh, design man? We've got to go to the Lord to fix yes. this thing. Yes. We can postulate. 
And we can do all kinds of round table talks. I saw Oprah Winfrey talking to all these people. She had them. We got a little Zoom here. She had a big old Zoom, big as, big as the wall of my house almost in, in the living room. And she had all these experts trying to figure out what to do. And do you know that most people, most of these experts, God bless them, had a different way of solving things. <laughs> One person said, turn to Jesus. One person out of all of them mentioned the Lord. One person. I'm telling you. And I'm not knocking them. They're trying. We're trying as humans, but we need to know who the problem solver is, okay? So these desires are fueled by Satan and they're gathered together and thrown into the pot of the jumbo liar because he knows that he's going to deceitfully hide the ingredients under the category of whatever. I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll bring, I'll bring this up. I, I, had mean to talk, I, I didn't mean to talk about this, but it came out this morning. Understand that some of the ways Satan fools people is through this term called social justice. Okay? Mark that down. Social justice. Justice. Now watch this. And this is why the world needs to come to realize that our definition of social justice issues should first meet the criteria of being defined as issues in the first place in the eyes of God. Hmm. We shouldn't say anything is a social justice issue unless it passes God's litmus test. Okay? Unless God says... It's an issue first and foremost. Otherwise, some of us gets in there. Some of our desires get in there. In other words, we need to see how God judges things which, uh, uh, which man deems to be uh, worthy of being called social issues or justice issues. We need to see what God says about these issues. Now, let me make this clear because I, I have to close soon, but I want you all to see how Satan works to stir things up to such a frenzy that unless we stick to God's word, unless we stick to, uh, 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 to, to what God is saying, uh, we'll be running from one issue to another, not even knowing what to really fight for, huh? Because not every issue should be regarded as a social issue. All right? Now watch this. For example, ask yourself this question. Is murder an issue with God? Of course it is. Of course it is. I answer for you. Darn right it is. You know why? Because his commandment says, Thou shalt not what? Kill. It says kill, but you know we mean murder in there, right? Thou shalt not take the life of another. Thou shalt not murder. Okay. Therefore, we know that murder is an issue. And murder can be, uh, murder is not only a crime, but it can be a, 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 said to be a, a very important social issue. So therefore, we know that the murder of George Floyd is an issue with God. Isn't it? It's an issue with God, first and foremost. Now, we know terrible things happen to people. We know that, too. But God does not condone the innocent killing of a human being. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Do we? Can we agree with that? Yeah. Do we know that God wants not one of us to perish? He came to seek and save, not to murder. Right? Okay? Yeah. So we know that. First and foremost, that is an issue with God. Now, the officer named Chauvin... Okay, I'm just using this as an example because it's, it's been talked about so much. But I'm, I'm trying to make a point, so bear with me. Chauvin first showed racist tendencies consistent with many uh, law enforcement agencies and personnel. Basically, white officers, that's what, that's what they're saying, against people of color. All right? So, we know that. And this has been going on in America's history. Can that be regarded as an issue with God? Think of God and how God judges and how God stands for what? Justice. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So if you're mistreating a person because of the color of their skin, which they have no control of it, and they are being persecuted like the Jews or anybody else were, would you say that's an issue with God? Yes. Right. Yeah, yes, it is. You're right again. Of course it is. Why? Because God's greatest, his second greatest commandment says to love your neighbor. 
as yourself. Doesn't he say it? Yes. Tell me if he didn't say it. He said it. He said, love your... He said the first greatest commandment is you love me with all your heart, soul, mind. The second is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. All right? So we know that's an issue with God. So, so, stay with me here. So this racism, which, which spawns the Black Lives Matter surge, is a relevant social issue. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It's a relevant social issue because of the injustice uh, levied at innocent members of society simply because of the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's an issue with God. So far, we're on the same page. Am I right? All right. We, 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 we're getting somewhere. We know that this social issue, uh, social justice issue, seems to work just fine. Ah, but there's a devil in the midst. There's a devil around here. There's a devil, okay? Mm. Now watch this. Watch what the devil does while stirring the pot of, what do I call it? Jumbo liar. Because that's what he is, okay? Big liar, that's what that means. Stirring the pot. Now, listen now. Before you eat that gumbo, or before you become that jumbo gumbo, listen to this. The LGBTQ, is that it? Did I cover it all? So far. They're now saying they deserve to be heard alongside the Black Lives Matter movement. They deserve to be heard be on the same side, on the same platform, on the same platter, as the Black Lives Matter. That's what they're saying. Hmm. Because they say they're being discriminated against. They're being discriminated against. Why? Is it the color of their skin? Is it the skin they're in? Basically, they're, they, want to, they want to engage in same-sex relationships. Now, should this activity be viewed as a viable social justice issue? No, 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 a thousand times no, of course not. Okay, I'm going to be fair. Why not? Thought you never ask. <laughs> Because God says in Leviticus 18.22 and also in Leviticus 20.13 that a man shall not lie with another man as with a woman for it is an abomination. abomination. He's so serious about it. He said that if you do, you shall surely be put surely to death. Die. Old Testament, Old Testament law, which thank God for Jesus that we don't uh, uh, put people to death for that now. But the premise is, this is so abhorrent to God that God said, no way, no how. Uh-uh. Mm. <clears throat> he said, no. <clears throat> okay, because for various reasons that we won't get into today. I can't preach on this today. It's going to take a long time. This is a, this is a, I could speak a week on this. <laughs> But also in the, in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 to 10, say the same thing, okay? Mention the same thing. Homosexuality, all these things, it's against the very fabric of what God designed in people. So, now, we don't have time to speak any longer on this, but let me just say that we have to be alert to what Satan will bring into the table, and put it in the pot and then serve it up to you and expect you to eat it, okay? And that's why we have to be in the Lord on this all the way, okay? Let me just say that I heard on Friday a male named Suzanne Ford, a male, you hear me? A male named Suzanne Ford who called himself, it, it, okay, let me say, let me put it like this. So it's a man who looks like a woman somewhat, but with a voice like mine, but with a red, either red hairdo or a bright red wig named Suzanne Ford. He says he's a trans activist, okay? 
And on the news, he was attempting to make the case now, get this, that since black lives matter, that black transsexuals should be afforded the right to consider, to be considered uh, 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 for the same amenities given to those who have been wronged by the police. Do you get me? Did I explain that right? He wanted, uh, he said black transsexuals should be uh, looked at it, with the same amenities given to uh, blacks in the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. And, and uh, the thing is, the man is not even black. The man is a, a white male, but he's lobbying, he's smart enough to lobby for black transsexuals to make an issue to say that not only have you been discriminated against black, but because you are black transsexual, you have been, been discriminated against and you're being hated on and there's no reason uh, for people to not include you and give you all the rights and uh, open up the doors to transsexuality regardless of your color. All right. So. This is why we must include the Lord in our decision making. I don't know how many people out there are transsexual. I, I, I have no idea. But, be, but it's clear that Satan will continue to run this game on yes. people to keep them confused as he steadily stirs the up pot. the pot. Jumbo style. Okay? Stirring up the pot. Okay? Uh, uh, so I want you all to think on these things because as we go, you're going to see more and more of this. When we don't have uh, God's order and God's rules in society, anybody can come up and start a, uh, a movement or, mm -hmm. or come up and jump on the bandwagon of your movement which is a reasonable and feasible movement, but here comes Satan saying, now you get in there too, because huh? I'm going to fan the flames, yes I am, and I'm going to stir this pot, and he who is is not, Nobody's and everything else. Nobody's <coughs> if we don't pay attention to the Lord. Yes. So I've got, I'm going to have to close, but if the Lord allows, I want to take this up from where we left off, where we're leaving off this week. I want to take it up next week because there's more, there's more. I need to let you all know that you need to prepare for what's coming in the future. It gets worse. I'm sorry, but it does. It's going to get worse before it gets better. There's much more coming down the pipe. And if you're not careful, you'll be boiling in it and Satan will be frantically and, and, and uh, uh, joyfully stirring the pot mm -hmm. with you in it. Mm -hmm. So now then, Pastor, take us to Revelation 9, verses 20 and 21, and I'm going to be done for the day. Revelation 9, verses 20 to 21, please. Revelations 9, verses, uh, Revelation 9, 20 to 21 says, But the rest of mankind were not killed by these plagues. By these plagues, it says. Did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold and silver and brass, stone and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not, they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Oh, amen. Thank you, Pastor. That sounds like something we've been seeing for the past few months, at least for the past few weeks. All right. Think about what's going on in the world today, seemingly from all sides and from all angles. We're seeing this right now, okay? God is doing his part, all right? And he's speaking to each and every one of us. God is speaking to all of us. And he's telling us to hunker down. Yes. He's telling us to hunker down because this is warfare. And yes, things are bad, but the worst is yes is yet to come. And that's how it is in battle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? That's how it is in a fight when you're fighting. Mm -hmm. hey, when you're training for a fight, you learn to train to go the distance. Do we not? Amen. We learn to go the whole 12 rounds. 
because you may not be able to solve that your opponent in one round, so you better have some energy left. And that's what it talks about in James 1.12, going the distance, okay? It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Amen? Amen. In Hebrews 12.1, it says, we are to run this race with endurance. Amen? The Amen. race that Jesus has run. And in 2 Timothy 3, 2, we talked about that. It says, therefore, you must endure hardship as a good soldier good of Jesus soldier. Christ. Good Amen. Mm -hmm. But we must be willing, above all things, to repent of our sins to the Lord. Amen. And then truly follow Jesus as prescribed in the word of God. Jesus is standing by. He's standing by to show us just how to do it. All right. But time is running out. So let's come back next week and I'll speak more in this sermon message, hunkering down in warfare, preparing for the worst. You're going to want to hear.